Welcome to episode 10 of the Head in the Clouds video series. I am Ken Hartman, a SANS certified instructor and content creator for the SANS Cloud Security Curriculum. Today's episode is titled Demonstration of Terraform Modules Deploy a Virtual Machine in AWS, Azure, and GCP at Once. The purpose of Head in the Clouds is to teach foundational cloud skills and security knowledge that will help others thrive in the cloud. The content ideas come from my personal observation of skills that I see some students lacking when they show up to a SANS cloud security course. Other ideas are passed on from fellow SANS instructors. The idea for today's content came from teaching SANS SEC 510, Public Cloud Security, AWS, Azure, and GCP, where we use variations of a Terraform script to deploy assets to AWS, Azure, and GCP throughout the week. While not strictly necessary, an understanding of Terraform modules will help students taking that course. Furthermore, since Terraform is a leading infrastructure as code tool, understanding how modules can be used to abstract infrastructure details is important knowledge for a cloud security professional to possess. First, take a look at the repository in GitHub. The main README describes how to deploy a VM in all three cloud service providers at once. We will come back to that in the second part after we deploy each module individually. Next, let's take a look at the README for each module. Each module gives the specifics of how to set up the authentication for each of the three cloud service providers. In this episode, I will not be dwelling on that configuration because each module provides the relevant documented references in the README and I've covered this in other Head in the Cloud episodes. To follow along with this episode, start with the new Ubuntu 20.04 system. For example, you could use a virtual machine on AWS, GCP, or VMware. It really doesn't matter, but I recommend that you start with a clean system to avoid issues. We're going to start with Google Cloud Platform. We will be setting this up following the steps from the beginning of Head in the Clouds Episode 4. These steps are summarized here for convenience, but refer to that episode for details and a video demonstration. We're going to generate a new SSH key pair. To do that, we'll run SSH keygen and accept the defaults. This key pair will be used by all three virtual machines. Next, we're going to log into GCP Cloud Console and create a new project. I recommend that you use a name similar to TF-GCP plus six random digits so that the project name is globally unique. We're going to create a service account named Terraform and attach the compute admin role to the service account. We'll click Done, and then next we'll click Manage Keys under the Actions heading. Then we click Add Key and select Create a New Key, select JSON as the format, and then click Create. This will generate a JSON key file that grants the holder access to the project. So we must be careful to properly protect it. Then we're going to move a copy of this key onto our Ubuntu system, placing it in a directory called Access Key and renaming the file service underscore account dot JSON. Since this is a new project, we will need to enable the GCE service by the web console. So do that now as well. Refer to the module README for more information. Now to set up AWS. First, let's install the AWS command line interface. 
By the way, always remember that the website headintheclouds.site contains the show notes for every episode, including the commands, so that you can cut and paste them. Next, in the AWS account that will host your EC2 instance, create an IAM user account with administrator access and generate an AWS access key. Then we run AWS configure to configure the command line interface with the AWS access key that was created in the previous step. Read the module README for more information. Now let's set up Azure. We need to install the Azure command line interface using the command as shown. And then we need to authenticate with Azure using AZ login. As before, refer to the README for more information and additional references. Since this is a clean new Ubuntu instance, we also need to install Terraform. So we'll run these commands and then we'll confirm the installation and verify the execution. Okay, now that we have the authentication configured for each cloud service provider, we will git clone our repository to our Ubuntu system and take a look at the root module. Note that the modules directory contains our nested modules. Great, now we will play with each module in turn. Change into the AWS module and take a look. Before we can deploy this virtual machine, we need to set the variables. Copy terraform.tfvars.example using the following command and then edit it as appropriate for your AWS configuration. Because I accepted the defaults when I generated the SSH key pair and am deploying to US East 1 with the default profile, I did not need to make any modifications. So here is what the default terraform.tfvars file looks like. Note that we should still be in the module slash AWS directory. Okay, it's time to deploy the AWS virtual machine. To do that, we run terraform init and then terraform apply. And hit yes when prompted. Eventually, we'll see something similar to this. Feel free to SSH into the new instance from the Ubuntu system using the string inside the quotation marks. Note that the Terraform script restricted access to ingress to just the SSH from just the public IP address of the system running the script. Since that worked, let's tear it down. Typing yes when prompted. And eventually we will see destroy complete. Now let's CD into the Azure module and take a look. As with the AWS module, we need to set the variables before we can deploy the Azure virtual machine. 
So let's copy our terraform.tfvars.example using the cp command. And then you need to edit it as appropriate for your Azure configuration. And again, because I accepted the defaults when I generated the SSH key pair and am deploying to the central US region, I did not need to make any modifications. So here's what the default terraform.tfvars file looks like for Azure. To deploy the Azure virtual machine, we run terraform init and then terraform apply. Again, typing yes when prompted. Cool, that worked. Now we can tear it down with Terraform Destroy. <music> Lastly, let's test the GCP module. We need a change into the GCP directory and let's do a directory listing. And as before, we need to set the variables before we can deploy our GCP virtual machine. We do that by copying the terraform.tfvars.example to terraform.tfvars. So here's what the default terraform.tfvars file looks like for GCP. And even if you're okay with the default GCP region and zone, you will need to replace the project ID with the project ID for the project you created earlier in the setup steps. Like last time, run the Terraform init and Terraform apply. Well, it looks good, so let's go ahead and tear it down. Now that we see how each module can work as standalone infrastructure as code, let's try deploying the entire project. Change into the directory for the root module. First, let's clean up the existing Terraform state files, the tfvars files for the modules, and the hidden Terraform directory in each module. We also need to set the terraform.tfvars file for the root module to have the right parameters. So we're going to copy it as before. Here is the default configuration. Be sure to modify the project ID and any other parameters as appropriate for your cloud environments. Having done that, we can deploy the complete infrastructure using Terraform init and Terraform apply. Very cool. You should see. And now we have a virtual machine in each of the big three clouds. Feel free to SSH in each if you like. And when you are done, destroy the deployment. The first thing that you may have noticed is that the outputs of the root module are different than the outputs of each of the nested modules. The main reason I did this is to differentiate the outputs from each of the modules so I could tell which SSH connection string belonged to which virtual machine. Note that the root module simply references the output of the nested module. While you're at it, compare the differences in each of the nested modules as to how 
each provider accesses the public IP attribute. Take a look at the output of the tree command from the home directory. Each of these modules could be implemented in a single main.tf module, but HashiCorp recommends that each module have an output.tf and a variables.tf file, as well as other tf files to compartmentalize the infrastructure and to make it more readable. See their documentation on the standard module structure. That document also recommends that modules be located in a directory called modules, but in practice, it seems that many developers ignore that advice. Each module is supposed to have a readme to improve portability and code reuse. Similarly, each variable and output is to have a description so that the code is self-documenting. Take the time to explore each of these files in the code repository. Lastly, check out the main.tf of the root module. These module blocks are passing in the variables defined in the root module variables.tf file and which are set in the root module terraform.tf vars file. They're passing them to the module variables that coincidentally, but not necessarily, have the same name. Notice that the module blocks each contain a source statement that contains the relative path to the code for that module. Well, there you go. Hopefully, this episode has demystified Terraform modules. Each module is a self-contained, deployable chunk of infrastructure code. We can nest these modules under a root module to deploy a larger infrastructure. The HashiCorp Terraform documentation on modules provides two additional important recommendations. Abstract infrastructure into modules only when it makes sense and improves manageability and readability. And second, use a flat hierarchy. Avoid nesting modules under nested modules. If you have any thoughts or comments on today's episode, feel free to chime in on the comments for this YouTube video. If you appreciate this video and want to see more like it, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Stay tuned for another installment of Head in the Clouds as announcements of new episodes are made on the SANS Cloud Security Twitter feed. Meanwhile, be sure to check out the other great videos on the SANS Cloud Security YouTube channel. Take care.